Hare Krishna and welcome back. My name is Raja Velasini Devi Dasi and today we have another way that we can welcome Krishna into our heart and home and today I'm talking about reading spiritual texts. So I've got a couple of my favorites that we'll talk about while we're here. Um, I, the way I started reading was I would take an amount of time and decide what I wanted to read. So for example Bhagavad Gita at first I said that I would like to read for half an hour a day quite quickly I learned that, that wasn't really practical and I wasn't really taking as much from it because it's not something you just read and it's not like a novel so to speak so probably the best tip that I would have would be to choose a text so it's up to you if you read in order or if you just choose something that you think would suit but for example for each one I just find one that starts on the start of a page we choose a text it's got the Sanskrit you don't have to learn the Sanskrit and then it has the translation word for word then it has the translation in English and then it has the purport. Now the purport is like a little discussion about what you've just read. Um, and I have some ideas that can help you to bring this on so that it makes it a little bit easier. So there's not too many rules, but there are some guidelines that I'd like to share with you. First of all, I'd find a place that you won't be disturbed. You could choose to sit on a cushion on the floor. You could choose to sit on the lounge or a chair outside. We do just say, um, make sure it's somewhere clean and not on the ground so much and not in your bed because your bed's not really clean. So we find somewhere that's nothing to do with sleep. It's about awake time and it's somewhere that's clean and peaceful. You might like to speak to your family and just let them know that this is your special time and that you'd like a little chunk of time just to dedicate to your spiritual practice or they might choose to come with you and sit down and you could read as a family, which is really nice because you can have a discussion with someone afterwards. There are also reading groups generally and lessons within your local temple or preaching center. But today we're discussing really just working from home with that, um, those lessons. Then the next thing is I like to offer a small thank you. So we might say something like, Dear Srila Prabhupada and Lord Krishna, thank you for sending us this eternal wisdom. Please allow me to understand this and learn from your teachings so that I can share this with others. So just something to let Srila Prabhupada and Krishna know that you appreciate um, what has been given to us. Now all of these books are of course uh, changed from Sanskrit into translated into English by Srila Prabhupada himself. So it's a lot of work that he's put in for us. The next thing to remember is that we need to ensure, as we've always discussed in every lesson, is about cleanliness. So we make sure our hands are clean. We're sitting somewhere that's clean. We're wearing clean clothes. Our books don't ever go on the floor. If something does accidentally go on the floor, we touch to our heads and be grateful that we've still got these books. Um, so these are sacred texts and just being respectful of the texts and what they represent and what great resources they are. My next tip is to try to um, read and understand what is written in English. Don't worry so much about the Sanskrit. That's not so important, especially at the start. Just choose any text or from the start, whatever you prefer, and read it and see how much you can comprehend and understand and bring into your life. And the next thing is, once you've read that and understood it, to really see if that is something that you can put into your life, put into place and make it a practical application. So you might read something about um, understanding that we're not this body. And in taking that throughout your day, you might be able to think about how that is relevant and how this can make changes in your life. So it's amazing how much comes down to day to day life that we don't even realize. So it really is important to really focus maybe on one text at a time especially to start with and have that as a lesson rather than just trying to read it as a novel if you like also if you go on to iskon desire tree or even just google srila Prabhupada and the text that you want so for example you could put bhagavad gita srila Prabhupada lecture chapter 4 text 4 and then that will come up with a lecture most of the time that you can watch from Srila Prabhupada or sometimes just listen to. So you might read that at home on your own and then on your way to work or while you're doing your service or while you're cooking, you can listen to a lecture that's discussing exactly what you've just read. Sometimes it's amazing that um, other people will come up with different ideas from the same thing as well. So for example, I'm doing a Bhakti Sastri course at the moment. And part of our lesson is for each chapter, we have to give six questions to the teachers surrounding what we've read. 
And what amazed me most about this course is that of all of us doing this course, none of us have doubled up on questions. We've all been coming up with different questions about exactly the same text. So we're all asking different questions, taking different things from it. And I guess that's probably depending on where we are in life and what's relevant to us. But I found that actually to be really interesting as part of our read. Uh, another book that I found really interesting was the Krishna book. There's lots of um, stories in there about Krishna's pastimes. There's absolutely beautiful photos throughout. And again, this is shared, the translation is shared by Srila Prabhupada. He translated that all with us. Beautiful, beautiful, I don't know if you can see that in there. Beautiful photos in there. And someone's really taken the time to not only give us the words, but give us the pictures that explain exactly what these pastimes are. So it's that's actually volume one of two. Bhagavad Gita says just the one volume. However, they are both very, very good books to start with and to keep as staples in your home library if you choose to have one. And, you know, you don't have to have it in a closed bookcase. You can have, you know, an open bookcase. You can display them. It really is up to you. This is just my personal choice for how I have them in my home. And my last one is just to try and incorporate some of these teachings in your day-to-day -day life. So after you've thought about them and meditated on them and maybe listen to a lesson or discuss them with people, take on these stories and see if they can actually make some kind of influence or difference in your life. You'll be amazed that one day there'll just be something that you read. And for, for me, that was um, a text from the second chapter that was teaching us about how we're not this body. And I had heard some lessons here and there and I was like, oh, okay, that's interesting, but not really delved into it too much. And one day this gentleman, Ben, was giving this lesson and he read this to me and I was almost like a light bulb moment that you see in those cartoons and he read it again and I was just like wow I, I really need to look more into this and that is how come I started researching and looking into and started a Facebook page that is called you're not that body because it really is such an important lesson. It's one of the first things that we learn in um, Krishna consciousness. And it is the most important thing for me that everyone can take a lesson from this. So that's probably all I have on that. Oh, the main thing I would just say is to enjoy remembering that listening to lectures from senior devotees such as Srila Prabhupada or any of the gurus out there, they're really the ones that have the true wisdom and knowledge that can pass that down to you in that disciplic succession. It is lovely too to have little study groups at home. You can do courses. If you go to your local preaching centre, as I said, or to a temple, almost every night they'll have some kind of discourse. So that will be taking something from Bhagavad Gita or Srimad Bhagavatam. They'll go through that as a lesson. They'll, they'll speak it in the Sanskrit. They'll speak um, the word for word translation. Then they'll speak the whole translation. Generally, then they'll do the purport or they might have their own translation of that purport. And then the best part is that there is usually an open discussion so anyone can ask questions. And it doesn't matter if you think that it's a silly question because if you're thinking of it, somebody else probably is too. So I'd love to hear if you have any questions or concerns or anything that you'd like me to help with. If you need me to put you in touch with the Preaching Centre or Temple, please do let me know. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Hare Krishna.